Welcome to Coleman Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman. We're talking Main Street and the small business lenders to help it grow live from Arlington. Joseph Coleman, Lance Sexton, and Jennifer Bloom Bloominging. Where's Where's Jennifer Blooming? She's she's uh, thirty seconds away, guys. She's, she's thirty on... seconds away. We're live. She had the first thirty seconds. So, well, I guess we're going to move on. Lance, tell us about the show. Tell us, uh, is it good to be back? Well, it's great to be. Uh, there you go. It's, there we go. It's, it's great, great to be at Mid America. It's great to see all of my SBA lending friends. Uh, it was fun, Bob, to do a training session here. Uh, it feels mostly normal. There's some differences, but I think all the lenders have expressed how happy they are to be back. Lance, compare this show to previous yeah. years. What percentage of the people? Uh, how, is it down? Is it the same in attendance? What What is your perception? Well, Bob, normally this conference has more than 400 bankers. Plus uh, this year they have 300 in-person okay. uh, bankers and 100 virtual attendees. So uh, the conference is a little smaller on an in-person basis, uh, but uh, it's still, it still, it feels good. There's plenty of people here. My breakout session probably had 60, 50 to 60 people in it, so uh, uh, it's a great conference. Lance, what was the content of your breakout session? Bob, I, I talked about, as you would expect, servicing and liquidation of your SBA loans. It was, uh, um, and we ended up spending quite a bit of time, Bob, talking about servicing the PPP loan because there are so, absolutely some requirements there uh, and we talked about the guarantee purchase process on PPP loans so it was a great session lots of good questions and answered all those and uh, had a lot of good interaction with the bankers uh, throughout region six I'll ask Jennifer in a second but what is your uh, what is the big news that you feel is coming out of the event Lance well really the biggest I mean there there's quite a bit but the biggest thing was the hint through the hint that uh, they're possibly, well, there's going to be some significant updates to the 5010-6, and there was even a hint that we might see a new 5010 in 2022. I don't know if we will, but a they did promise. And seven? Is that where we're going? I, I'm not sure, Bob, but they kind of hinted at that, but they did absolutely say that there would be several updates between now and the end of the year on the 50 10 six right, because there's been some changes absolutely all right let's see if I could do this without notes Jennifer Bloomig with eventfully years Jennifer great job uh, Jennifer's the conference organizer she's she's herding cats all throughout the uh, well primarily east coast and southeast um, Jennifer what's the big takeaway at the event in your opinion you know I don't know if Lance said this already but for me the big takeaway is it looks almost normal here you know nice. people are walking around I mean yes people have their masks on I mean I would say it's mixed you know, some masks, some not. Of course, you know, Texas, it's not a requirement here. Um, but, you know, we've used that crowd pass, so we know everyone here has either been vaccinated or they've had a negative COVID test to come in. So I think people feel comfortable. Um, you know, it's a great environment. It's a lot of energy, right? So, yeah, it's been great. Well, good for you, Jennifer. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're putting – this is your largest event post-COVID, correct? So far, Bob. So we have one more. Flagel is poised to beat this one, perhaps. So well, I want to hear. I want to hear. Uh, go <laughs> ahead. Give the plug for Flagel. Yeah, and I'll, I'm going to plug it. Yeah. So Please, tomorrow's the last it. day. You know, last day to register wow. for Flagel. So that's in Florida, guys. It's in Orlando. So if we can do it in Texas, we can certainly do it in What's Orlando. What's going to cost you, Jennifer, for me to get on a get in my car, get on a plane? What's going to cost me to show up to Florida? Um, you know, I think it's somewhere around five or five ninety nine now if you're a member or non member at this point. So, you know, it's late registration, but it's worth the ticket price. I mean it, this is some people's only event this year, so why not come? It's gonna be a, a college theme. I was just on the phone with an unnamed uh college university band that might be playing 
at the event. So oh. yeah, definitely Very come out. Nice. Um, how are these speakers? How's it working out with the speakers on the Zoom calls? Are we getting the technology better on that? I think so. I mean, I think other than the speaker, you know, speakers getting used to it themselves, realizing there's, oh, there's another speaker here, you know, on the screen, right? Well, and Bob, Bob, my office. And you're oh. fine. There Bob, you uh, my work with you helped prepare me for the presentation, how you and I play off one another on the show. I had a speaker that was virtual, and I just had to remember, hey, Go so to him every now and then. Share, you know, share a little bit of the training. So I mean, I, I, I cover some. I'm like Jeff. What's your thoughts? So it worked well. Real quick, who is there from SBA, Jennifer? Uh, but we have a couple people from SBA. Oh, I'm sorry. There are Bob quite a number of district office people here, the Good. Dallas District Office, the Arkansas District Office, the Houston District Office, but Jennifer's right on point. All the Washington SBA folks could not travel, so we had them all virtually yesterday in the main session, but it was great. John Miller led off and did a tremendous job. Diana. What is the news uh, coming out of Washington? What is, John, what is John's main message to the lenders? Well, I, I, he spent a lot of time just congratulating everybody on the incredible level of 7A lending, the incredible level of 504 lending, uh, and I think John was more of a, hey, thank you, you did a great job this year. Uh, Very good. Hey, Jennifer, thanks for stopping by. I know you're busy. Um, yeah. And let's do this all over again in Florida. And what are the dates for, for Orlando? So Orlando, Orlando is September 20th. To Very good. Thanks, Jennifer. You're welcome. Lance, um, let's see. This is Joseph. This came from, um, I apologize, they don't have the source. Uh, but real quick, the top seven screen outs and the top ten screen outs of the loan processing centers. Uh, Lance, there's, there's really nothing new on that uh, for... Um, the, the, I don't see. I don't see life. I don't see life insurance used to be up there number one, but uh, that's, number that's one for me is projections. That's uh, that's projections. I think are probably the most important. Yeah, the 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 life insurance falls under the credit memo un, incomplete. So that okay. that was still there. This is just the 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 last. I think uh, Michelle said this is from the last twelve months nationwide. Um, and what is the source of this, Joseph Michelle? Michelle Torres is the uh, uh, lender relationship specialist out of the North Texas, North Texas District Office. Right. So she is a fantastic source. She spoke um, about basic processing, a lot of the origination stuff. And, and th this, this was the main uh, takeaway is the 70 screen outs. Um, remain roughly the same. However, projections is a big deal in the last in, – Last, yeah, projections have moved, have moved number one. Forms right. 19, 19, 19, 20, very simple, complete them. Um, and debt refinance, obviously we have all the rules. Credit elsewhere is still on the list. And, of course, change of ownership is um, is uh, has very specific SBA rules. We're going to publish this in our Coleman Report C-suite or a, a special edition today, so don't – You'd have to write all these down. Anything surprising on 504? Number one, authorization errors. What are they talking about there, Joseph? Uh, she didn't. She didn't go into 504 screenouts too much. She. Um, th these were the top ten. However, um, this she just listed them. So I will. I will go in back into a PowerPoint and, and try to elaborate more on the on the daily that's going to go in an hour. But these were the top ten. Uh, a little bit different from 7A. There's just different issues. Um, but roughly the same thing. It's it's really attention to details and uh, making sure that the verifications in eTrans are uh, are clicked. She said you can click on it three, ten, twenty times if you need to. It's it's unlimited well, seven, to verify it. So seven, eight, nine, ten are easy. Do the math. It means they're not right. adding up. That's all that is. So just make sure they make sure they're adding up. Um, very good. Lance, we got a new notice in today. I don't know if you had a chance to see it about interim financing any, uh, for 7A loans. Anything special in there that um, 
stands out for you? Oh, yeah, I, I, not anything significant other than they're they're trying to limit fees on uh, the interim loans that are refinanced with an SBA loan. Um, yeah, the the, the main, um, you know, we'll, we have this attached, we'll go over it to tomorrow. The main thing is, is the original purpose has to be legitimate on these interim loans. So you can do them, but be careful on how it's, it's got to be the same as, as a, um, yeah. Regular, but again, we're not in a funding. This would be more appropriate if we were in a funding holiday. We're not, so I don't know how how much that is. Um, what's going on, Lance, with the CARES Act payments and late fee request? Well, the the CARES Act payments are still there. Uh, CARES Act payments on seven A loans, uh, as long as the loan is submitted uh, and approved prior to the end of the year uh, it'll and and they it'll be eligible for cares act payments uh, they did talk yesterday about the 504 loan program of course the regular 504 loan program is out of money um, and uh, the 7 8 program John Miller indicated that he felt comfortable that we're going to have plenty of money to get to September the 3rd Lance, we have a great question. And by the way, those dates have been extended on the FTA till tomorrow, so you have more time in to get those in. Paul asked a great question, Lance, is, uh, hey, I have someone who has a uh, garage and wants to put his office in there. He wants to do an SBA construction loan. The loan's for about $300,000. What, uh, what would Lance do? Uh, Paul, this is an incredible question because, you know, initially I, my thoughts are why would we do, uh, why wouldn't we do this as a PLP loan and get the maximum guarantee? But actually, Bob, I think you made this recommendation that an express loan would be the way to do this, uh, partially because the collateral is going to be different. Uh, and, and yes, I would take a second mortgage on the property as collateral on this Absolutely. using the SBA Express Loan Program. Uh, it, my, my initial thoughts, Bob, were, hey, no, use POP, but the problem is your collateral position is not going to be appropriate for POP. So yeah. an, express can, loan, an express loan with a second on the property is the way to go. Yeah, and we can do this as long as um, uh, what is the percentages on ownership and business operation? Do you know offhand? Well, the, in this particular case, uh, you know, typically the business needs to, uh, when we're talking about space that's leased, I mean, this is unusual, Bob, because it's personal residence. Technically, you know, the business, uh, there's not a percentage that it has to occupy the total property square footage. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, great. Um, the other thing that's been coming up is there is news in Congress and Congress is continuing to talk about additional stimulus for small business lenders specifically and what to do with these fees. Uh, it's still in the um, preliminary stages, so we'll let you know uh, how that happens. Joseph, so overall, um, so how, how are we doing in Dallas? Excellent show. Um, same energy as America East, if not even more. Everybody, I know Lance is extremely excited to see all of his friends and be back at Mount. He's, he's a veteran uh, celebrity. I walk around the halls and everybody knows Lance. Um, uh, everybody is enjoying the show that we put together and, and extremely appreciative of all that. And it's just, a, it's, it's a good um, communication with old friends. So, oh, good. Yeah. Lance, you're doing a webinar uh, next week on past due 30 days. And give us an elevator pitch on that one. Well, we're going to talk about what you do with an SBA loan that gets uh, 30 days past due or more and how you service that. In fact, we talked about that some today in my breakout session. Uh, and we're also going to talk about servicing requirements on uh, PPP loans because uh, there are some things you as a prudent lender, as a good persistent lender, have to do in servicing PPP loans.
And then the following week, we're going to follow up with the um, uh, 10 tab PDK uh, nuances you need to do in today's environment. And um, that's becoming more and more prevalent now that all the CARES Act payments have stopped. Correct, Lance? I, I completely agree, Bob. I think now that the 11-12 payments have ended, we're going to see some defaults, uh, and we're going to see the need to put together a quality 10 tab package. Absolutely. And, that's, and then Lance is an expert on that, so I'm looking forward to those. End of the month, Lance and I will do an acquisition loan. I believe that was on number six on the list on things you have to do uh, with, again, 24 25% of SBA 7A lending are for BizAct loans. So that's extremely, extremely important. Lance, I'll give you the last word. Actually, um, wrap it up for us, Lance. On that well, I, I, there's, it's exciting, Bob, just to see SBA lenders get back together. Uh, it's exciting to feel the energy and see all the ideas and information shared. So. Uh, while we're not 100% back to normal, it, it, it's like Jennifer said earlier, it's very close, and it's All a right. lot of fun. All right. Joseph, Lance, you guys travel safe coming home. And thank you all for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street. One entrepreneur. Have a great day.